of our canum. The second quarter, New Lebanon discount drugs. The halftime show brought to you by Daryl, super value of New Lebanon. Third quarter, trot line auto sales of our canum. The fourth quarter, RJ Warner Insurance Agency of our canum. The post game show brought to you by Fred Sellers Realty of New Lebanon. And now I will go to the Arcanum Trojans. They're currently averaging 67 points and giving up 53 points for a plus 14 ratio. Their head coach is Larry Patrick. In the Cross County Conference, they are 4-0. Overall, they are 7-2. Their athletic director is Marty Montgomery. They lost to Coldwater, 49-63. Defeated National Trail 67 to 50. Defeated Brookfield 78 to 45. Defeated Mississinawa Valley 75 to 53. Defeated Newton 81 to 54. They lost to Marion Local 52 to 57. They defeated Versailles 79 to 52. They defeated Franklin Road 69 to 62. And defeated Tri Village 51 to 44. Now for the Arcanum Trojans roster. Number 12, Dane French, 5'8", senior guard. Number 32, Tim Gunkel, 5'11", senior forward. Number 24, Sean Hines, 6'0", junior forward. Number 30, John Troutwine, 6'4", junior center. Number 34, Kyle Prince, 5'8", senior guard. Number 10, Donnie Baker, 5'8", senior guard. Number 40, Todd Miller, 5'8", senior guard forward. Number 22, Chad Fritz, 5'10", junior forward. Number 44, Brian Preston, 6 foot 3, junior center. And number 42, Nikki Ruby, 5'11", junior forward. The officials for tonight, we have Harry Hall for sure, and we have an injury to Mr. Ken Brewer, and we do not yet know who the other official will be. The principal for the Arcanum Trojans, Neil Hans. The cheerleader advisor are Becky French and Barb Troutwine, cheerleaders. Holly Fout, Amy Reinhardt, Angie Reinhardt, Yvette Sharp, Don Taylor, and Kelly Troutwine. And now we'll turn it over to the Dixie Greyhounds. The pregame show is brought to you by Bell's IGA of New Lebanon. The Dixie Greyhounds. They're averaging 70 points per contest and giving up 48 for a plus 22 ratio. They're also number five in the state of Ohio in Class AA division. Their head coach is none other than Gary Pepley. Their athletic director, Jane Borgen. In the SWBL, they are 4-0. Overall, they are perfect 10-0. They defeated Oakwood, Brookville, Oakwood again, Carroll, Rebel Shawnee, Tri-County North, Northridge, Milton Union, Dayton Christian, and last night defeated Carlisle in their closest game of the year. They still won by nine. Now, for the roster, number 32, Ken Branch, 6'3", senior forward. Number 52, Wes Coffey, 6'10", senior center. Number 42, Darren Rankin, 6'4", senior forward. Number 14, Chris Pepley, 6'0", senior guard. Number 34, Phil McLeod, 6'2", senior guard. Number 12, Tony Anucci, 6'2", senior guard forward. Number 22, Alan Pentecost, 5'10", senior guard. Number 44, Dan Baker, 6'0", senior guard. Number 24, Rick Atchison, 6'1", junior forward. Number 50, Jamie Frio, 6'2", junior center. And number 40, Darren Crawford, 6'1", senior forward. The officials, as I mentioned before, Harry Hall for sure, and an official to be announced. Ken Burr was supposed to officiate, but due to an injury, he will not be able to go with Harry Hall. The cheerleader advisor for the Dixie Greyhounds, Brenda Sowers, and now for the cheerleaders, Mary Ann Blosser, Lori Combs, Michelle Espy, Leslie Hamilton, Robin Honius, Jennifer Hughes, Shannon Lockhart, and the assistant AD is Gary Pepley. And now, I'll turn it over to Ted Lane Sr., who go over the reserve scoring. The ninth grade game, first of all, was won by Dixie. Excellent ball games, 34 to 33, in favor of the Dixie Hounds over the Arcanum Trojans. The reserve game also went to Dixie, 41 to 28. 
Dixie took over immediately, led 16 to 7 after one quarter and 31 to 17 at halftime. It was 40 to 21 in favor of the Hounds at the end of three quarters, and then Coach Jim Bauer called off his Hounds, and they only scored one point in the entire fourth quarter, ending up winning 41 to 28 for Arcanum. Unofficially, the scoring, we have Troy Eubank with nine points. We have Payne with five. We have Rice with two. This is for Arcanum. We have Fritz with two, Ruby with two, Preston with four, and Burrell with four. Four, the winning Dixie Hounds, Bemis with seven, Blosser with four, Brown with ten, excellent outside shooting there by Brown, Atchison two, Powers seven, Friels eight, Ellis two, and Morgan one. So the final score of the reserve contest 41 to 28, Mick Sagaster. While we've got a moment, how do you see this contest as you watch the teams out there on the court? Have you changed your mind at all? Is it still going to be a close one? Well, I think so. Both teams look fairly loose. I thought they might be a little bit tight, but our coaches have prepared them pretty good, and they, they look loose. All right, we'll be back in a moment with the national anthem. But first, I think we do have a few extra facts that we might throw in from last year. Last year was quite a contest. Arcanum did win that one, 84 to 74. Arcanum was four and five at that time. Dixie was seven and zero last year before the loss was pinned on them. Last year's game was played at Arcanum. Last year, Ken Branch was not eligible due to grades. Last year, the rest were Jeff Akers and Don Kaler. Last year, the box score read for Dixie, 33 field goals, eight free throws for 74 points. Last year for Arkham, listen to this, 22 field goals, 40 freebies for 84 points. From the charity stripe last season, it was Dixie, eight of 17 for 48%. Arkham, beautiful free throw shooting, 71%, 40 of 56. The total number of fouls last year totaled 73. Donnie Baker had nine free throws, Sean Hine at 14, and Tim Kunkel, 14. Mick Sagander, that is excellent free throw shooting no matter where you are, even if you're at home gymnasium. Now, Arcanum usually has good shooters. They shoot the ball well, and they take good shots. Free throws, they still knock them down. All right, back in a moment with more action. Now everyone is standing for the national anthem. Probably the most important game for both teams tonight, even though it's a non-league game. Agree or disagree? Yeah, this is what high school is all about. Basketball, the fans are here, they're ready. It is a jam-packed gymnasium. Our Canham's fans are on their feet right now. Dixie's fans are sitting down right now, but they're ready too. Ted Landis Jr. is ready for this first quarter. The first quarter brought to you by Sutton Super Value of Arcanum. Ted Landis Jr., take it away. About ready for the opening tap. Dixie Greyhounds, 10 and 0, number five in the state of Ohio, class AA. Against the Arcanum Trojans who are seven and two. And this year, they are Class A. Jumping center will be number 30, Troutwine for the Arcanum Trojans. 
at number 52, West Coffee of the Dixie Greyhounds. Harry Hall with the basketball. Signaling for everybody to get into place. Step goes to the Greyhound. Branch throws it over to Chris Pepley. Pepley, the coach's son. To Branch. Over to McLeod. Pepley. They work the ball around the perimeter. Knocked out of bounds by the 32, Tim Gunkel. For the Arcanum Trojans, Ken Branch will throw the ball inbounds. Packed house tonight. Here at New Lebanon, home of the Dixie Greyhounds. McLeod to Branch. Seven and a half minutes remaining. First quarter brought to you by Sutton Super Value. For Arcanum. Jumper up and good by Ken Branch. Branch hit from the outside against the 2 3 zone put on by the Arcanum Trojans. Trout line with the basketball over to Hine. Hine from the corner misses. Rebound goes to Coffee. Bethlehem takes it all the way back out. McLeod in the corner to Rankin. Bethlehem. Branch, McLeod, Rankin in the corner, misses, gets his own rebound, foul before we have anything else occur. Looks like it will go on number 12, Dane French, 5'8", senior guard, first foul on the Arcanum Trojans. Pepley, throws it over in the corner, Rankin, Branch. Ball is kicked by the alert Dane French with his quickness. Branch ready to receive the basketball from Harry Hall. Bethlehem out by the big D, right around midcourt. Branch over in the corner. Shot by Pepley in and out. Rebound comes out to the Arcanum Trojans. Number 32, Gunkel. Gunkel owns the ball. Turnover goes over now to the Dixie Greyhounds of head coach Gary Pepley. Working the ball past the timeline. Pepley throws it to McLeod. McLeod rejected by Troutwine. French gets the ball in the corner. Had the, the Trojans start there. Fast break. Jumper up, no good by Donnie Baker. Rebound by Branch. And you can hear the crowd yelling back and forth for their respective schools. That's high school basketball at its best. 2 to 0, 5 40 remaining in the first quarter. Brought to you by Sutton Super Value. Of a Canham shot up and good by Ken Branch. Branch with a nice move. Connected on the short jumper. French to Gunkel. Gunkel over to Troutwine. Troutwine way out. Connect. Troutwine with a 15 foot jumper. Four to two. Stepley to Branch. And we have a foul. Coffee going for the slam dunk was fouled by number 30. John Troutwine, six foot four, junior center. And that's about all Troutwine could do when Coffee was up there in the stratosphere. Six foot ten against six foot four. Two shots now for West Coffee. Coffee looking for his first points of the quarter. The shot misses. The Arcanum Trojan fans cheer. Second free throw on its way 
Good. Five to Hines. Throws it to French. French loses it out of bounds in the corner. Five to two with 502 remaining in the first quarter. Branch accepts the basketball. Throws it over to Chris Pepley. Two three zone. Arcanum Trojans of head coach Larry Patrick. McLeod. Pepley. It's knocked around and goes to the Arcanum Trojans. Sean Hine whips a pass to Baker. Baker loses control. McLeod back to Pepley. Pepley setting things up for the Dixie Greyhounds. Working against the zone. Pepley decided not to take the shot. McLeod to Coffee. Coffee puts in a little jump hook. Coffee now with three points. Score is seven to two in favor of the Dixie Greyhounds. French. To Hine, Hine to Troutwine, Troutwine puts it in. Troutwine looking tough for the Arcanum Trojans. He has all four points for Arcanum. Seven to four, 356, and counting down this first quarter. Brought to you by Sutton, super value of Arcanum. Scott Sutton, Kirby Sutton. Branch fakes, and he is called for traveling. Played some shuffle music out there with his feet. Now the Trojans can pull to within one point. French going against Pepley. French makes a nice move over to Gunkel. Gunkel puts it in. Nothing but the net. Seven to six. Pepley, French. McLeod. Back to Pepley. Branch, Pepley, they get it into West Coffee. Foul, underneath. This foul will go on number 32, Tim Gunkel, 5'11", senior forward. Now we have a correction, and a big correction it is. Foul will go on Troutwine. Troutwine now has two fouls. Jumper up. No good. Rebound comes out to the Hound. Into Coffee. Coffee misses. Branch is there. Branch puts in a nice shot off the glass. But the ball will go the other way for the Arkham Trojans. And the Dixie Greyhound band are not happy with that particular call. Foul on Ken Branch. And as we just mentioned, Trout Wine, two fouls for the Trojans. Jumper up, no good. Fight for the board, comes out to West Coffee. Pepley, bringing the ball up quickly, throws it to Branch and back to Pepley. Greyhounds working against the zone in the corner. Rankin, Pepley, McLeod, Two Branch. Branch turn around. It's good. Six points for Ken Branch. Branch and Coffee have all the points for the Dixie Hounds. Branch with six, Coffee three. Donnie Baker with the basketball. Hine. Hine to Gunkel. Gunkel puts on a little fake. Body foul on the Dixie Greyhounds. Number 42, Darren Rankin, six foot four, senior forward. One foul on Branch and one foul on Rankin. Sutton Super Value bringing the first quarter action. Centel Cable, Channel 5. French. Working inside. It's off the hands of number 44, Brian Preston, six foot three, junior center. He is in early because of the foul trouble of Trout Wine. Pepsley. To McLeod over on the right wing. Now it's back to the left. Rankin. 
That would McLeod. Pass broken up and a steal. French maneuvering, puts it. And nice move, Dane French. Nine to eight. Hounds up by one point. Center lady move was made by French. Perhaps momentum has changed. Trojan fans are getting into it. Branch from the outside connects. Branch hitting about everything that he puts up. Eight points in this first quarter. French to Hine. And Hine playing some string music from the corner. 11 to 10, 47 seconds. Coffee. Works through a couple of defenders. We have a foul on the Arcanum Trojans, number 32. This time it will go on Tim Gunkel. 14 fouls on the Trojans. One more, Greyhounds will be in the bonus. McLeod to Coffee. Back to Pethley. Coach Pethley puts up one finger. Go for one. It's a lob pass to Coffee. Coffee with five. Branch with eight. That's the Dixie Greyhound scoring total. 20 seconds. Now, as the Trojans try to pull within one, Gunkel puts it up and it's good. Gunkel with four, eight, seven, six. Shot up. No good. Foul on the arm. 15 foul on the Trojans. The foul went on Tim Gunkel, and now two fouls on Gunkel. And two fouls on trial one. And we're about ready to end this first quarter. Shot up and no good by McLeod. 13 to 12. Greyhounds up by one point. In and out. Coffee puts it in. Last second shot. Hits the Raptors. And that ends the first quarter. Brought to you by Sutton's Super Value of Arcanum. The Arcanum Trojans have 12 points, while the Dixie Greyhounds have 15. Scoring now with Ted Landis Sr. Scoring won't take long for Dixie because Ken Branch, Big Branch, has eight points. West Coffee has seven points, and that is it. No one else has scored a point for the Hounds. On the other side, Arcanum, Dane French has two. Tim Dunkel has two baskets for four points, but he also has two fouls. John Hine has one basket for two points. John Troutwine has two baskets for four points, but he also has two fouls. And right now, Mick, it's the foul line. Five to two is the way I see it, and that's going to hurt Arcanum. Yeah, Arcanum started in a two-three. They tried to pack it tight, giving the outside shot. Dixie took their time, still tried to work the ball inside. They got him in a little bit of foul trouble. Arcanum, on the other hand, they came down, tried to penetrate, dump off, get the open shot, and shoot the shot. They surprised me. They tried to run up a little bit. Dixie took their time and tried to push the ball underneath. So you just can't tell when you get hit two good teams together. Both coaches are trying it all. Ted Landis Jr., that was a good quarter. And here we go with the second quarter. And who's our sponsor? Second quarter is brought to you by New Lebanon Discount Drugs. Sutton Super Gymnasium. Beautiful, beautiful Saturday night. Arcana with the basketball. Who could find a better place for the admission fee than this? 15 to 12, Arcana with the ball. Working and working to get the good shot. You have to against the unbeaten hound. Sean Hines moves Branch away, moves in, and works for a foul shot and got just exactly what he wanted. He came up roses on that one, did Sean Hines. We're waiting on the call, and the call is against Darren Rankin. And that is Darren Rankin's second foul. And the team's third. 
It is considered a two-shot foul. Don Hines puts it up and bounces it in. Hines gets the first point of the second quarter. Back comes Tim Gunkel. Out goes Brian Preston. Tim Gunkel, the acrobatic man for Arcanum. And he has two fouls. Hines still bouncing. The Dixie crowd yells. It does make it perhaps a difference as Hines missed it. Branch with the rebound. Pepley over to McLeod. McLeod passes in to the big man. And the big man is there. That's Wes Covey. Wes, big drink of coffee. And he has already nine points. Arganum tries to answer. Baker drives. Baker shoots. Baker scores. Oh, excuse me, French. French bounced that one in. Looked like he was out of control, but when it goes in, you look like a hero. 17-15 is the score. Arcanum stays in that zone. They're going to stay there until somebody does something. And Pepley might have just done that as he destroyed the zone. That may be Chris Pepley's first shot, Nick. Yeah, he should take that shot. It's going to open the inside. He's just packing deeper, trying to get a coffee to shoot. There's a rejection by Coffee of Hine, but he knocks it out of bounds. In comes a couple substitutes now for Dixie as Dixie brings in Number 12, Tony Anucci. Arcanum with the basketball. Passes underneath. The move is up. And the shot, beautiful shot by Sean Hine. And Hine is doing his job. It's 19 to 17. Pepley way out here as Arcanum stays in their 2 3. They are determined. Their strategy is set. Anucci passes the branch. And there's a steal. It's by Baker, number 10, and he drives, and there is a foul. As Baker got the foul, French. Now they're waiting to see if it's goaltending, and I don't believe Mick Sagan said they're going to get the goaltending that they want. No, I think when it was going up, he might have hit it, but it wasn't on, well, on its way down. So Ken Branch picks up the foul. Ken Branch has two fouls. Fouls are going to tell the tale, perhaps, tonight. At the line will be Donnie Baker, 5'8", senior forward, and he will have two shots. This second quarter brought to you by New Lebanon, discount leg. Up and in goes the free throw, Baker's first point of the contest. And our Cam has served notice that they are not intimidated by the hound crowd. Up, in, and we have ourselves a 19-19 tie. That's the way high school basketball ought to be when two great teams play. Dixie, fifth in the state. Arcanum, seven and two, but they're down here tonight, and they've brought their supporters. And they're going to play a 2-3 zone until Dixie does something about it. Back it comes to Branch. Branch inside, could have been a layup there, but no. And there the pass is out, and the shot up, and this taken off by Gunkel of Arkenham. Arkenham can take the lead. Gunkel's open for a shot. It does not go. Branch dies the pass over, and it hits the basket. It hits the basket. Otherwise, it would have been a jam. There, perhaps, they got a little bit too fancy. Gary Pepley is not pleased. But they came back with the ball, and that's the main thing. If they score on this possession, Pepley takes the shot and misses it. Branch is there, however. Branch dies. Branch misses. Right now, they can't buy a basket. Dixie. Hine with the ball for Arcanum. Again, Arcanum can take the lead. And again, Arcanum misses. And here comes Anucci to Pepley. Pepley drives up and in. Pepley. 21 19. Dixie. It was wild right there, man. Yeah, Pepley made a nice move on that one. He throws such good passes. He does have to score, too, though. He absolutely does. Arcanum is here. Arcanum isn't going to give up. Hine drives. Hine scores. But they're charging, and they're going to take away the basket. Arcanum fans are absolutely furious on that one. The ball went in beautifully. But there is two points gone. Two points are gone. 21-19, it remains. And now, Dixie can take a four-point lead. Back and forth, ebb and flow. 
This is basketball. The pass comes over. The shot is up and in. By number 22, that's Alan Pentecost. Alan Pentecost, he can hit outside. Coach Pepley said he's one of the best shots he's got on the team. He proved it. 23-19 is our cams working. Dunkel's open. Dunkel misses. Dunkel rebounds. Dunkel hit. He hit everything, but it went in. Acrobatic Dunkel has his six points. The score, 23-21. What a basketball game. What a privilege to be here. Denzel Cable, Channel 5. Inside they come to Branch. Branch jumps. He's got it. Oh, Kenny Branch. Big three. First basket of the second quarter, but he's got 10 points already. 25 to 21. Arcanum looking for the good shot, and they get it. And Dave French, again an acrobat. Dixie with the basketball, Pumpley over to Branch. Arcanum, however, prepared. Arcanum gets back fast. Three minutes and 39 seconds and counting. 25 to 23. Arcanum with a two-point lead. Pumpley drives, gets a layup. Oh, oh he likes to see that one. Pumpley has six points. All of them in this quarter. It's almost as if he heard Vic Sagerster when he said he's got to take a shot because he's doing it this quarter. And now we have a foul underneath. And the foul is on Sean Hines. Sean Hines' second foul. Harry Hall made the call. Referee Harry Hall. And it's going to be one and one at 318. Mick, that was a hurtful foul. Yeah, I think the one on one's going to come into play, and the fouls are so you can play the best with, with the fouls. We have at the line West Coffee. West Coffee has already nine points tonight. West with a chance to make it more. And he buried it. This is the biggest lead now 28 to 23 in favor of the Dixie Hounds, number five in the state, unbeaten 10 and 0 and they'd love to keep it that way. Arcanum would like to spoil it again. And it's in. Arcanum now is down six points. They must hit on some of these possessions. This second quarter brought to you by New Lebanon Discount Drugs, and they're certainly sponsoring a good quarter right now for Dixon. Here's a drive, and up, and in. And it's good. What a move. I know you've heard me say many times that Gunkel is an acrobat. How about that shot? He's got great body control, and he just made a beautiful move there. Got the guy faked up and went underneath and made a beautiful move. All right. The foul on Chris Pepley, his first. Here we have Tim Gunkel at the line. He already has eight. He wants a three-point play. He gets it. Nine points for Gunkel. The game now gets tight again at 29-26. When Arcanum needs the points, Mr. Gunkel is the man. Still Arcanum stays in their zone. There's a shot from way out, and it's an air ball. Gunkel takes it. Bad shot there by Anucci. Gunkel drives, Gunkel shoots, Gunkel hits. And again, they're going to call charging on Arcanum and take away another basket. Mick, the Arcanum people are absolutely incensed on that. That's the second one. Dixie plays good team defense. They get in good position, and it was a good call. All right. You heard it here, Ventel Cable. The foul on Tim Gunkel is his third. And that is difficult to take if you're an Arcanum Trojan fan because he is the one that you depend on. Now Dixie with the basketball works it in and is knocked out of bounds. The Trojans are scrapping. Actually, the score is 29-26. It could well be the other way if Arcanum has not had those two calls. And they are really giving it to the referees. Believe me, our Cannon fans are vociferous, just as the hound. Dixie, Pepley with the ball, passes it out. And here's a, almost a steal, but no, a foul on our Cannon. Dave French, and that's his second foul. Mickey, the fouls are proliferating on our Cannon. They're playing aggressive defense, trying to get the steal, and that'll just happen. All right, Tony Anucci. At the line, six foot two, senior, guard forward. Gets set, puts it up. Nothing but net. It's 30 to 26. 
30 to 26. Oh, this gymnasium is packed. Up and in. 31, 26. Five-point lead for the unbeaten hounds playing at home. Arcanum on the road on a Saturday night. They did not play last night. Now, the move, the shot, no good, rebounded by Coffey. Could be a fast break, is a fast break, is a layup, and from the 22, drives it home. That is Alan Pentecost. Now, we find a timeout being called by Arcanum with the score, 33 to 26. Ted Landis Jr., you've had a chance. How about going over the scoring so far? In this quarter, French has four for the Trojans. Gunkel has five for the Trojans. Hine has three, and Baker has two for the Dixie Greyhound. They are getting more in the scoring column. Branch with two in the second quarter. Coffee with four. Stapley with six. Anucci with two, and Pentecost with four. This second quarter brought to you by the New Lebanon Discount Drugs. Next Lancaster, we have 156 left in the second quarter, and Dixie has moved out to its biggest lead. What must Arcanum do to get back in it? Well, that was an excellent timeout because Arcanum was just getting a little bit tired right there. Dixie will wear you out. They hit the boards, and you just got to work so hard on defense to stop them. I think they'll work and get a good shot with Gunkel out of there. They don't have the main man and Troutwine out of there. They need to take their time and get a good shot here. As I said, the foul situation really is hurting Arcanum. Dane French with two. We have Jim Gunkel with three. Sean Hine with two. And John Troutwine with two. So you know they are hurting. Here we go with basketball. And Arcanum trying to make a comeback. Hine drives up and... It was no good, but there's a steal. The alert from French drives, and there's got to be a call here. And French may be hurt. I hope not. We pray he's all right. Good. A foul is called. Let's wait and see. It's on Chris Pepley, and that is Pepley's second foul. Pepley, two fouls. We have French at the line. French shoots and misses. Hit the front of the rim. That's not what our cannon needs. They need those free throws because they are down seven points. Up. No good again. And Coffey cleans the glass like Windex, as they say, the cliche. Here we go inside. And Big Coffee's got it. Shoot that jump. Coffey shooting outside farther than I've seen him for a while. 35 to 26. And the unbeaten hounds are doing the job. And Coffey has no fouls whatsoever. Now, Arcanum looking with Troutwine to get back into it. Hind doing the moving. Hind has the ball rejected. But Arcanum comes up with it. And the shot is up and in. Five. Number 10, Donnie Baker. Baker got an alert steal, and Arcanum really needed that one. 35, 28, we're down to 55 seconds. This second quarter has flown by. This is the kind of basketball that Sendell Cable Channel 5 has been privileged to bring you the last two nights. Tri County North against South. South still once beaten. But what a game that was. And here we have the unbeaten Hounds against the twice beaten Trojans. Right now, you're watching as Pepley has the basketball. And it looks as if the Hounds are going to stall out the game and take that last shot. They have a seven-point lead right now. Arcanum stays in the 2-3 zone. They are not panicking. No Larry Patrick team ever will. No Gary Pepley team ever will. These are two coaches that are ice school. We have 12 seconds. Any time now, a shot. And now nine. And now seven. And the shot is up. And is in by Darren Crawford. And Mrs. Crawford right in front of us says, that's my boy. And the last shot by Arcanum does not go in. The score at halftime, 37 to 28. Ted Landis Jr., how about the total scoring right now? First for the Arcanum Trojans. Dane French with six points. Tim Gunkel with nine points. Sean Hine with five points. John Troutwine with four points. And Donnie Baker with four points. 
for a total of 28 points. Now for the Dixie Greyhounds. Ken, Big, Tree Branch with 10 points. West Coffee will have to add these up. Nine in the first quarter and six in the second. Total of 15 already. Chris Pepley with six. Anucci with two, and Alan Pentecost with four points. This halftime show brought to you by Daryl, Super Value of New Lebanon. Now, while we have the time, let's go over their cheerleaders for both squads. The Arcanum Trojans, cheerleader at both House of Arcanum. Stop in and tell the trout wines that you enjoy the telecast. Jim, Red, and Dick Trout wine. You want to buy a new used car? You know where to go, in Arcanum. We're about ready now as the two respective teams are in a huddle talking to each other. Coach Larry Patrick is up talking to one of the officials. They're walking around the scoring table right now. This non-conference affair will be sh shown Monday at 8, 10 p.m. And then again Tuesday at 6.15 p.m. Working now on the alternating possession on which way it will go. And it looks like it will go over to the Dixie Greyhounds. That's what the discussion was about. Branch throws it in to Chris Pepler. 37-28. Branch with the basketball over to Pepler. Pentecost starting the second half. over to Pentecost and Pepley way out top. 23 foot jumper, good! Chris Pepley, 39-28. Dixie Grounds are up by double digits. Shot no good, follow up, no good. Branch, skies for the rebound. Branch, to Pepley. Seven minutes remaining in this third quarter. Brought to you by Trot Wine Auto Sales of Arcanum. Goes off the foot of an alert Dane French, five foot eight senior guard. 10 and 0 Greyhound, 7 and 2 Arcanum Trojans. Centel Cable Channel 5. Branch inbounds the ball to Pepley. Back to Branch. Working against the zone. Quick pass to Rankin. Rankin, turn around. It's good. Darren Rankin with his first bucket of the game. Coming with 6.39 remaining this third quarter. Partial rejection by Coffee as Dunkel tried to put in a quick short shot. Missed by Branch. Baker leading the attack for the Trojans, long jumper, it's off the mark, rebound, Branch, fast breaking, Greyhound, Darren Rankin, number 42, six foot four, senior forward, timeout, head coach Larry Patrick, with 6.09 remaining in this third quarter, the score is 43 to 28, in this quarter the Greyhounds have outscored the Trojans, six to zero. We'll keep it right here. Mick Sackinger, while we focus down here, let the cheerleaders do their thing. Let you and I do a little talking. Dixie came out smoking. They've got six points, and they're fast breaking now. Is our cannon tired? Well, Dixie just playing such smart basketball. They're down here. They're working for the good shot. Penley, first quarter, he just used a beautiful pass inside. He kind of took over the second quarter with some scoring. And right here, he's kind of making that defense just not know what he's going to do, shoot, pass, or what, and they're taking it away. 
All right. And of course, the tremendous height differential did show up there underneath the basket just then as Arcanum tried to make a shot. I believe it was Gunkel, and he was simply rejected by six foot ten. You just don't go up against six foot ten very often. As I said, Dixie plays such good team defense. The guards get after you out front, and if you beat them, you got six ten coffee, and then you got Branch and Rankin right there. It's hard to beat. Hard to beat. Remember, this is a non-league contest. Both teams are unbeaten in the league and will stay that way no matter what happens tonight. I believe that Dixie and Brookville are tied the SWBL and it's Twin Valley South and Arcanum about to have at each other later on. Trojan. Trojan. Throw it away. Dane French throws it over the head of Sean Ein. And I'm sure Coach Patrick did not want that to happen, especially after the timeout. Shot up and good. Allen Pentecost. 17-point lead for the Dixie Hounds. Shot up no good by Baker. Foul on Pentecost. will be considered a shooting foul. 8-0 bust out for the Dixie Greyhounds in this quarter. Donnie Baker, 5'8", senior guard, has five points for this contest. Misses, rebound, branch, branch. Goes over to Pentecost. Pentecost lighting up the scoreboard. 47-29. 18-point lead. Rejection by Coffee. Trout line. Right his best, though, to put it up. An errant toss by Chris Papley, the coach's son. And he hears his father. Telling him not to do that again. 5-10 remaining. Third quarter brought to you by Trout Line Auto Sales. Partial rejection by Ken Branch. Branch skying up tonight. He was not able to play in last year's Arcanum Dixie Clash. Bank shot good by Trout Line. Greyhounds must deal with the press. Dunk, dunk, dunk by Ken Big Tree Branch. And the Dixie Greyhound fans are up. And as a matter of fact, I have to get up to see the court. Shot up, no good by Trout Line Branch. Throws it over, traveling on the Dixie Greyhounds. Four now, 49 to 31. 18 points, the Arcanum Trojans are down. French maneuvering on Pepley. Over to Trout Wine, Trout Wine. Hine, Trout Wine. Trout Wine misses completely, but underneath. We have Dayton French, I believe. Shot up and good by Rankin. Still, Dixie Graham. Shot up and good. This will be Alan Pentecost credited with the bucket. Timeout once again. Head coach Larry Patrick still trying to talk to his players. And get them back into the contest. But right now it is 53 to 33 with 348 remaining in the third quarter. Three forty eight remaining in the third quarter. Brought to you by Trout Wine Auto Sales of Arcanum. Jim Fred and Dick Trout Wine trying to reach the Arcanum. Trojans on. 
Trojans with the basketball. Baker puts in a hook that does not go. Rebound by Trout Line. Foul on number 42, Darren Rankin. Three fouls on Rankin, six foot four, senior four. Trout Line with six points. In the ball game, misses the free throw. John Troutwine, six foot four, junior center, so he'll be back next year. This free throw is good. 53 34. A branch dribbles through four defenders, passes to Coffee. Foul will probably go on Hind. And if so, that will be Hind's third personal foul. Foul does go on Hind. Coffee. Good. His first point in this third quarter. Coffee dribbles. Puts a free throw up in and out. It's knocked out of bounds. And it's back to the Dixie Grounds. So nothing seems to be going right for the Arcanum Trojan in this quarter. Substitution for the Trojans, number 34, Kyle Prince, 5'8", senior guard. He replaces Donnie Baker. Officials conferring with the players. In the corner, Rankin, Rankin misses. Strong rebound by Gunkel, Gunkel. Puts it up, bounces around, rebound. Trout one, trout one, rejected. Foul on the Dixie Greyhound. Foul on Allen Pentecost. His second, team's third. Gunkel will throw the ball inbounds from, from underneath his own bucket. Lob pass to Hine. Hine misses. Rebound Branch. Branch with the outlet pass. Definitely throws it. Broken up by French. French is called for traveling. And that was very evident that they had the ball, but he was not under control. 54-34. Dixie Grounds up by 20. Definitely. Takes it all the way back out to Branch. Over on the right wing. Back to Pepley. 2-3 zone. The Trojans have been using all night against the Dixie Hounds. Branch puts it up. In and out. And we have a foul called on Coffee. Coffee looks on in disbelief. That's Coffee's first foul. Johnny Baker. In for Dane French. Baker takes the basketball and goes to work. Nice tipsy do by Tim Gunkel, the acrobat in the air. Pentecost, Peplin, Branch. Coffee in the branch. Branch throws it back out. Short jumper, good by Rankin. Rankin has come alive in this quarter with eight. Hine misses, tipped by Trout Wine, and on the back foul will go on Ken Branch. Three fouls on Ken Branch. 
142 remaining in this third quarter. Brought to you by Trout Wine out of the sales of Arcanum. And speaking of Trout Wine, that's exactly who we have at the free throw line, John Trout Wine. Trout Wine with seven points. And out goes Ken Branch for the Dixie Greyhounds. One and one, free throw good. Four points in this quarter for Trout Wine. This one also good. Pepley. Now taking his time, calling out the signal, Anucci. It's back to Pepley. The Trojans are in a zone. And it looks like from this vantage point that they're going to make the Trojans come out. So we'll have to wait and see. Down to one minute. Greyhounds also may be looking for just one shot. Coffee loses the ball out of bounds. Trojans with a bucket here can cut it to 16. Baker dribbling with his right hand, makes a move, puts it up, short. Follow up, no good by trial line, Pepley. Three on one, passes over. Shot is missed by the Greyhounds. Hine whips the pass over. It's over to trial line. And that's Arcanum Trojan basketball style. Trout Wine with seven points in this quarter. It is down to 16. 14 seconds remain in this third quarter. Brought to you by Trout Wine out of sales of Arcanum. Seven, six, five. Anucci over to Rankin. Rankin connects. Last second shot, no good. So the third quarter ends up in favor of the Dixie Greyhounds. The Greyhounds with 58 points and the Arcanum Trojans with 40. Scoring now with Ted Landis Sr. The scoring belongs to Dixie and especially to Darren Rankin who poured home 10 points in that eight minute span. Beautiful. Pepley had two. We have Pentecost with six. Coffee with one and Branch with one, and that one was the big jam. For Arkham, it was Dave French with two, Tim Gunkel with two, Donnie Baker with one, and John Troutwine was the big man in that particular quarter, sponsored by Troutwine. Auto sales, he had seven points, but Arkham, Nick Sagister, is in dire straits. 18 points down, away game, you're not healthy, it looks pretty tough to come back. Yeah, it does. Dixie put on a clinic that quarter. Uh, they just ran the fast break, ex excellent play, good defense, and just found the open man and shot the ball well. Nick, I want to ask you something. A Friday night game, then a Saturday night game for Dixie, and Principal Holly said that helps Dixie. What about it? Arcanum didn't play on Friday. Well, Dixie just played excellent basketball, so I don't know. Um, Arcanum, they do look a little tired, but Dixie will do that to you. So. We find Arcanum trying to come back this fourth quarter by R.J. Warner Insurance Company of Arcanum. Inside it comes the Trout Wine. Trout Wine has the shot, but he has to shoot over six foot ten, and it just simply didn't fall. Rankin, who had a tremendous third quarter, over to Branch, and now it looks as if Arcanum is going to come out of that zone and go man to man. That should free up Branch. Branch with the ball. We find. Still, Arcanum stays in a tight man-to-man -man now, and so far, Dixie has not answered. We find Pentecost with the ball over the branch. Inside it goes, back out the branch. Branch passes inside, and finally it's Rankin. Rankin, who made a move, perhaps the move of the night. 60 to 40, here comes 
our cannon, the trout line misses, and that ever-present Rankin, what a second half he's having. That play with the basketball. Dixie Greyhound loses it. Here we go. It's Gunkle driving, driving up in. When Jim Gunkle gets loose, you can hang it up. He's going to make it. And he did just that. Took it through the hole. 60 to 42. They won't quit. You don't expect them to. Another bad play by Pentecost. And that one gives the ball back to Arkham. Coach Pepley didn't seem to like that too much. But the call went nonetheless. Arcanum with the basketball. Six minutes, 34 seconds left. Can Arcanum come back on an away gymnasium on a Saturday night? We'll see. The shot is up and in by Donnie Baker, number 10, born at home. Now it's 60 to 44. Don't look for any quit in the Trojans. They don't know what the word quit means. Halfway with the basketball. Cross the timeline. Over to Pentecost. Pentecost dribbling out the branch. Rankin with the ball. Dixie has not scored for a while. There's a bad shot. And it's rebounded by Troutwine. And here come the Trojans driving, driving, looking for the good shot. The pass, the shot, no good. And Rankin comes away with that rebound. What a rebound by Darren Rankin. So far, he's got the only point. He didn't score in the first half. But, oh, has he had fun in the second half with 12. And there's another good play by Troutwine. And the steal, the pass, the drive up and in. And that's the first point of the night for Kyle Prince for Arcanum. Arcanum Trojans do not quit. 60 to 46. Now, Dixie needs to make a basket. And still, we find Arcanum ball hawking. Mick, they don't quit. No, they're playing an aggressive man to man and they're going after the ball. 60 to 46, five minutes and 17 seconds left. The fourth quarter brought to you by R.J. Warner, insurance of our cannon. Pentecost takes the seat now. In comes Phil McLeod. Phil McLeod has yet to score tonight, yet to score. He's the one that can hit them too from outside. Our cannon throws you now in that aggressive man-to-man. -man. McLeod over the branch. Half play with the ball. Five minutes left, and there's a long shot. No good. And the rebound taken off by Gumpel, then by Branch. It's loose again. Here's the jam. What, what could happen? You knew what was going to happen, but he got it away from Gumpel. Branch put the slam. He had the score 62 to 46. Now our Kim trying to retaliate. The shot was hit on the way up, but no call was made. And a foul on our cannon, and a technical has been called on John Troutwine. Now let's go back on that, Nick Sagister. I did definitely see the ball being hit on the way down. Yes, it was. I don't know what that call was. He got a little mad there, and a technical. A technical foul on John Troutwine. Now let's see who's going to be shooting the technical foul. The score, 62 to 46. And it was a most difficult call to see. Rick, they're still talking things over down here. What is it to talk about now? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that. All right, I believe Chris Pepley will be shooting the technical foul. Yes, that is correct. All right, Pepley will be shooting the technical. Our cannon was angry because they did not call that particular infraction. And Pepley makes the technical foul. The score, the score is 63 to 46. And I believe that they also have given the ball over to Dixie. So Dixie has a chance to really gain on this particular situation. Rankin with the ball over to McLeod. There's the ball loose, taken by Hine, and Hine is fouled. And this one is on Darren Rankin. And Rankin picks up his third foul. Rankin picks up his third foul. Arcanum has only fouled twice in this second half. 
Gypsy has committed many more infractions. And at the line, we find Sean Hine. Hine has been shut down tonight. He's been held to five points. How he'd love to put on a fourth quarter. He's up. He's in. The score now is 63 to 47. Rankin sits down. In comes Tony Anucci. Gypsy's bench is just so strong. So strong. Hines, or Cannon, shoots and hits again. John Hines makes it 63 to 48. That's 15 points and only four minutes and 23 seconds to go and counting. Heffley across the timeline being harassed, but he gets there. The pass comes into the big copy, and they're going to call a foul on Tim Gunkel pushing. And that will be four fouls on Tim Gunkel. Tim Dunkel of our Cam commits the third infraction of the half. McLeod disdains the shot. Back to Branch, Branch to Pepley. Dixie having themselves a ball here on their own gym. This fourth quarter brought to you by the R.J. Warner Insurance Company. They won't be enjoying this particular quarter, but certainly it is good basketball. The shot is up, missed, but the rebound comes away to Toppy. He was jostled and traveled, and no call except traveling was made, so perhaps they got a break. They need a lot of them with only 3.43 to go. Arcanum looking for the good shot, and here we have a foul. The foul is called an illegal pick is called by referee Harry Hall on Dane French. That French is third and the team's fourth. From now on, Dixie shoots a one and one. And they're really having difficulty getting it in. Arcanum ball hawking Dane French all over the court. Remember, this is a non-league game. In the CCC, Arcanum will remain unsullied as Dixie is unsullied, period. They haven't lost to anybody. Now, Dixie's across the timeline, getting it over to Branch. Branch back out, because they've moved it around. They come in now to the big man, and the big man pours it home. That's left, Toffee. Toffee is now beginning to assert himself everywhere on the court. When you're six foot 10, you better. And there's a move there, not called. As Dunkel thought he was fouled, there's a rejection. It's on the cloud with the ball, but they say that the cloud traveled. Nick, a lot of mistakes right now. Yeah, it's getting a little hectic. Arcana wants to run up there and get a shot, and Dixie, they're kind of getting one to go down and get a fast break, too, and it's getting a little hectic. 65 to 48, 2 minutes and 52 seconds. That's all that's left. The pass. There's a lot, and Big Coffee with the ball, passes the Pepley, Pepley to Branch, and Branch misses, and a tip by Coffee. The tip came off, barely off, and Coffee just tipped it in. What a job he has done tonight. Hine up, and Hine made a shot that barely disturbed the cords. It was so perfect that it barely disturbed the cords. 67 to 50, and Pepley almost trips but comes back out with it the quarterback of the team having himself another fine evening and we find a foul call on sean hine sean hine commits his fourth foul that will put at the line big branch branch they call him that's his name but actually he plays basketball above the rim he's listed ken branch at six foot three i don't know if he's really that tall the big he jumps more than that. And he's quick off his feet. He's right now, he's up there. All right. We find the fourth quarter brought to you by R.J. Warner, insurance agency of Arcanum. And the shot is up, and it's missed by Branch, rebounded by Gunkel. Gunkel never quits. Here's the pass, and the shot is rejected. Arcanum tried a shot, and Coffey flat out rejected it. I mean, he knocked it against the wall. Kyle Prince tried it, paid the price. Out comes Ken Branch. Branch goes out. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 points, several of them being jams. Now, our cannon trying to get just a couple more points. Knocked out of bounds, given back to Dunkel. Dunkel looking for somebody underneath. Here we go. The shot is up and in by number 10, Dane Baker. And we're waiting on the call. I believe it's a two-shot foul now called on Donnie Baker. Mick, why the two shot? Well, he, they said he didn't go after the ball. They thought it was an intentional foul, so it's a two-shot foul. All right. That brings Chris Pimpley to the line. And as Mick said, an intentional foul gives him two shots, and then the ball out of bounds. It's a tremendous penalty, isn't it, Mick? Yeah, that's a new rule this year, and they're going to see how it works to make the ref call the intentional foul if it is intentional. All right. We do not know, of course, whether it's intentional. You never can read a kid's mind. You just have to make a judgment call and live with it. 67 to 52, Pepley up, and Pepley scores at home. Chris Pepley. That is Pepley's 10th point of the night. He has another. In. Now. With that penalty, they also get the ball out of bounds again. 69 to 52. In for Arkham comes Chad Fritz, and out goes a very tired Tim Gunkel. Tim Gunkel played his heart out tonight, Mick, but it just wasn't enough. He's an outstanding basketball player, and they were just up against it with a tall, talented 60 team. Out goes Chris Pepley. Substitute. Filter onto the court. We have exactly two minutes left. Let's see what happens. And here's a steal by Baker. He drives and shoots and scores. Donnie Baker. Six points in this quarter. Arcanum with the press. McLeod with the ball. Passing over. Filanucci. They're having fun. The Dixie Hounds are. But this is a tough defeat for Arcanum. There's a ball. Knocked out of bounds, the players go sprawling, and Donnie Baker assists McLeod to his feet. I don't know exactly what the call was either. As it looks as if it's Arcanum going to get the ball out of bounds. Bill McLeod still has not scored in this game. One minute and 33 seconds left in this contest. And a foul is called on McLeod. That, Mickey, is something that I'm sure Coach Pepley's not going to be pleased about. No, he'd like that minute 33 to run out right now. 15-point lead, 133 to go. The last thing you want is to have that clock stop. Remember, the fourth quarter brought to you by R.J. Warner Insurance of Mark Adam. We have Kyle Prince at the line, and he has two points. Now make it three. Arcanum, a dead game team, never gives up. And in the Cross County Conference, they'll still be heard from. Another one goes in. The lead's down now to 13, 69 to 56. Dixie with the basketball. Waiting on the clock to run out. Reels is in there, McLeod's in there, McLeod takes a shot, misses, again rebounded by Prince, he's having a fine fourth quarter, Arcanum's looking to get some more points on the board before it's over, Preston in there loses the ball, Dixie gets the steal, here's the fast break, who's going to take the shot? Anucci, but he didn't take it, and traveling is called on Arcanum, and that's on Kyle Prince, and Prince is not happy at all with that development. We have exactly 58 seconds left in this contest. Dixie going to end up 11 and 0. Our cannon will drop to 7 and 3. And this will be, of course, a wonderful victory for Dixie and a tough loss for the Trojans. Still. One fine basketball team. Back and forth go the Hounds now. Just killing time. Just killing time. Dan Baker's in there. Friel's in there. 
Jamie Fools. Jamie Fools put in a jumper. Here comes our count. Shot up, no good. The rebound. Oh my, and all of the possession is called there. Our cannon thought they were fouled for sure, but Harry Hall says no, all of the possession. A little bit of jump ball, and they give it to 60, 18 seconds. 18 seconds, that's all that's left. Baker with the basketball, and he's called for traveling. He says, I didn't do it, but Harry Hall said, yes, you did. And Harry Hall wins. Centel Cable Channel 5 bringing you this telecast on Monday night and again on Tuesday night. Monday at 8.10, Tuesday at 6.15. Here we go, and there's a foul on Jamie Friels. With five seconds left to go, R.J. Warner Insurance Company bringing you the fourth quarter, Tim Boone, Doug Lambert. Then later on, we'll have a post-game show with Fred Sellers Realty of New Lebanon. At the line, Brian Preston, six foot three, junior hits it, and Preston gets his name into the box score. Brian Preston, only a junior. He'll be back up in Preston pours at home. One thing about our kid, they do not quit. And here we go, five, four, three, two, and that's it, 71 to 58 is the final tally 71 to 58 13 points in favor of the unbeaten 11 and 0 dixie greyhounds and the teams mix showing tremendous class are out there shaking hands that's what it's all about that's right they played a good game the game was officiated good and it was just a good night for basketball especially for dixie dixie i was just so impressed with them they can hit you so many ways inside outside every they got a guy that can score 20 they got six of them guys that can do it any night any night the big thing of course to remember too mick is that this is a non-league encounter dixie won by nine points last night over carlisle and now they've won a non-league game over Arcana, but both teams are still unbeaten in their respective leagues. And of course, one being Class A, that is Arcana, one being Double A Dixie, they will not play again. Well, I'll tell you, Arcana, just playing good teams makes you better. This can only help them as the season goes on. Now they have a big game coming up in a week or two with Twin Valley South, and you've seen Twin Valley South, so uh, that should be one of those climactic contests, too. Well, I think that'd be an excellent matchup. I think both teams can match up exactly. They got the same height. They both shoot the ball good. They run up and down the court, and it should be a barn burn. Let me ask you this while Ted Landis Jr. is counting up the scoring. One quick question, Nick. They're rated number five in the state. Is that a fair reading? Yes, I think so. Uh, Ted, I was so impressed. They just played good basic basketball. They worked well together. Um, they've had, they played together two and three years. They have an outstanding coach. The coach has been around the, the big games. He's, and I think the team, it was a big game tonight, and they proved they played a big game. They're going to win. All right, Ted Lana Jr., the unofficial final score. Scoring first for the Arcanum Trojans, who go to 7-3 and three overall. Number 12, Dane French with eight points. Number 32, Tim Gunkel with 13 points. Number 24, Sean Hine with nine points. Number 30, John Troutwine with 11 points. Number 34, Kyle Prince with four points. Number 10, Donnie Baker with 11 points. And number 44, Brian P Preston with two points for a total of 58. Now for the victorious Dixie Greyhounds, they go to 11 and 0 overall. Number 32, Ken Branch with 14 points. Number 52, Wes Coffey, 18 points. Number 42, Darren Rankin with 12 points. Number 14, Chris Pepley with 11 points. Number 12, Tony Anucci with two points. Number 22, Alan Pentecost with 10 points. Number 50, Jamie Frios with two points. And number 40, Darren Crawford with two points for a total of 71. The final score ended up the Dixie Greyhounds 71 and the Arcanum Trojans 58. This post-game show brought to you by...